The protests sweeping the country have rocked Donald Trump's presidency and galvanized public opinion in favor of a fundamental rethinking of how policing works in this country. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. As we've said before, there is probably no worse person on the face of the earth to occupy the presidency in this moment of national crisis than Donald Trump. We're in the middle of a pandemic with a president who doesn't understand or care to understand science. We're having an intense national discussion on systemic racism, and we elected a virulent racist and serial golfer. He's less ready to meet the moment than the dads on Teen Mom. Those guys are real duds. He's a soulless business potato whose brain has been zapped by decades of right-wing cable news and the asbestos in his buildings. Hold on one second. I'm going to take a bump of this wall candy. Trump has always been historically unpopular, but now, amid nationwide protests against racist police brutality, a deadly pandemic that he utterly failed to contain, and massive unemployment, more Americans are coming around to the idea that maybe, just maybe, electing a racist, Diet Coke stained beanbag chair wasn't the best idea. Trump has sagged considerably in polls over the last few weeks to put in photos. He was here, and now he's here. Several polls have his approval rating dipping below 40 and tied with Joe Biden in some very unlikely places. The new CNN national poll shows Biden with a 14 point lead over President Trump. Our poll also shows an overwhelming majority of Americans support the peaceful protests and disapprove of the president's response to the unrest. The president's approval rating slipped seven points in the last month, according to a new CNN poll. And 63% of adults disapprove of how he's handled race relations in the country. 65% say his response to the protest has done more harm than good. The polls suggest Donald Trump would be absolutely crushed by Joseph Biden if the election were held today. Get this, in just the past week, polls have come out showing Biden up 15 points in Michigan, up nine in Wisconsin, up four in Arizona, up two in Ohio, tied in Iowa, tied in Texas. And when a Democrat is ahead in the polls against Donald Trump, it's all over, baby. And who knows, Texas is historically red, but maybe Biden has a chance there. Sure, Skateboard Jones didn't have the best presidential campaign, but he did come within two and a half percentage points of beating this wear badger. The Washington Post poll also found that much of the opposition to Trump is vehement, as 47% of Americans say they strongly disapprove of the way the president has responded to protests. Wow, it's bad enough when the majority disapprove of you, but to have nearly half say they strongly disapprove of you must be depressing. It's one thing if you pass a note to a classmate that says, do you like me, and they check no. It's another if they write in, I'd rather eat a burrito filled with dog turds. The polling is so bad for Trump, and this is true. His campaign is running ads on TV in Washington, D.C., just so Trump will see those ads and feel better about himself. With their boss growing increasingly agitated with the state of his re-election campaign and with the effort of Republican critics to undermine it, President Trump's team hatched a plan They'd run a series of hard-hitting ads and place them on networks that they knew the president and congressional Republicans would watch. And so, over the past month, the Trump campaign has spent slightly more than $400,000 on cable news ads in the Washington, D.C. area, buying time largely on Fox News, but with some smaller buys on CNN and MSNBC as well. They spent nearly half a million dollars on ads in a city they know they won't win just so the president will see them and feel better about himself. I mean, I guess, I guess I get it. Sometimes I leave the weather channel on for my dog so she doesn't get nervous and chew up the sofa. I'm just not sure if I'd do it if it cost half a million dollars. Seriously, at this point, I'd say they should just sit him down in front of Sesame Street, but even Big Bird would take one look at him and say, hey kid, maybe spelling's not for you. You wanna try and find a stick while the, while the rest of us talk? Yeah, go find a stick. Where you do vowels, you go find a stick. So Trump has seen his political standing erode considerably, and it's especially striking to contrast Trump's numbers with the overwhelming public approval of the protests spurred by the horrific murder of George Floyd at the hands of police. Majorities of Americans are finally coming around to the reality that acts of police violence against black people aren't just isolated incidents from a few bad apples. They're part of a fundamentally corrupt system based on a history of racism and exploitation. And that is a massive shift in public opinion galvanized by the nationwide protests. And not only is public opinion changing, but so are the responses from lawmakers. In New York, for example, activists have sought for years to repeal a highly restrictive police secrecy law known as 50A, which shields police brutality records from public view. But yesterday, thanks to the protest, New York lawmakers repealed it. 
The law, known as 50A, exceeds virtually all in America in the way it blocks public requests for more information on problematic officers. The controversial statute technically keeps the personnel records of police officers, firefighters, and corrections officers confidential and not subject to inspection or review. I feel like they just threw firefighters in there to make it look better. Dave, I hear you squirted your water next to the fire instead of onto it. That's going in your file, Dave. This proves once again that direct mass action in the streets gets results. The demonstrations are working, lawmakers are responding to the pressure. Even Republicans in Congress are reportedly considering a police reform bill. It's a sign of just how far the politics have shifted that they're even talking about it at all. Senate Republicans spend most of their time rushing through unqualified right-wing judges, conducting absurd investigations of Democrats, and coming up with dumber and dumber excuses for why they're not commenting on the new terrible thing Trump has said. Oh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't see it. Uh, my wife uh, forgot to pay our Twitter bill. Is that a thing? So the politics of this issue have shifted massively thanks to protesters and organizers in the streets doing the work. People across the country have also been shocked and appalled by the countless videos of police violence against peaceful protesters that have circulated online. And there's a point at which you have to ask yourself, can this even be reformed? One bad flight, and you might be like, maybe we can make air travel better, but if every flight you take ends up in the Hudson River, you might think it's time to defund Spirit Airlines. We've seen police officers armed like they're going to war, showing up in riot gear, beating protesters, shoving them to the ground, hitting them with batons, trapping them on bridges, lobbing flashbangs and pepper balls, and raining down tear gas like they just turned on the fog machine at a 12-year-old's roller rink party. Hey guys, grab your skates and get on the floor. It's Adam's Bar Mitzvah! Beep, 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 beep. People, I think that was maybe a mistake to try to make that noise. Uh, you know, if we were in a studio, it would be a sound effect, but there you go, that's how it went. People are increasingly asking themselves, why are our tax dollars paying for these egregious abuses of power? Which is why you're increasingly hearing a call from activists to dismantle police departments and defund the police, a refrain that has conservatives and many Democrats freaking out. The president tweeted just a short time ago, quote, law and order not defund and abolish the police. The radical left Democrats have gone crazy. Dangerous offspring of this movement is, are you ready for this? defund the police. This is a dangerous idea, and it's an insane idea. Uh, funding of police is a local matter, as you know. Uh, from the standpoint of our legislation, we're not going to that place. I don't support defunding the police. In the future, the left envisions the only people who will have guns are people on their team. And that's exactly what defund the police really means. It means a woke militia policing our cities, enforcing Democratic Party orthodoxy. Imagine what it's all gonna look like with no police at all. Defund the police, you have no police department. What are you going to do to protect yourself and your families? Well, I don't know, Sean. I just assumed you'd use your sick MMA moves. You guys know Jean-Claude Van Ham. Usually MMA dudes look like menacing fighting machines. Handy looks like an out-of-shape dad trying to impress his stepson. Tyler, come on out to the garage. We're about to do a roundhouse kick. Oh, my groin, Tyler. Oh, pulled it off the bone. Get me an ice pack or just call the hospital. Also, Tucker, you think the left wants to replace the police with a woke militia? In your warped mind, what do you even imagine this woke militia would look like? Antifa, skate teens patrolling the streets in their Hamilton t-shirts, forgiving everyone's student loans and forcing them to use their free government health care? I'm sorry, sir, I have no choice but to detain you and bring you to the hospital, get that rash checked out free of charge. And then, jump on the back of my board. And then, there's Trump, who's clearly grasping for just anything to revive his sinking poll numbers, and he seems to be road testing a bunch of different attack lines all at once, mainly by changing one word and repeating himself. We won't be defunding our police. We won't be dismantling our police. We won't be disbanding our police. We won't be ending our police force. Ooh, someone got a thesaurus. I guess Trump's had a lot of free time in that bunker. Mr. President, what are you doing down there? Uh, I am defecating. My dungarees. And by the way, if you're a Democratic politician who finds the phrase defund the police somehow politically inconvenient because it wasn't focus grouped into oblivion first to ensure that it's as anodyne and shaved down as possible, too bad. It's not the job of activists to make you feel comfortable politically. As Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez put it, poll tested slogans and electoral feasibility is not the activist job. Their job is to organize, support, and transform public opinion, which they're doing. Our job as policymakers is to take the public's mandate and find and create pockets to advance as much progress as possible. 
Progress takes a team of different roles. You don't criticize a pitcher for not being a catcher. Exactly. You criticize a pitcher for not pitching well, or in the case of 50 Cent, you criticize them for agreeing to throw out a first pitch without ever having thrown, touched, seen, read, or even heard about baseball before in their entire life. And his first pitch was not great. Just a bit outside. We wanted to watch it again. Just let us watch it again. Instead of obsessively telling activists and organizers in the street during the work how they can rewrite their slogans to make you feel more safer politically, maybe you can just listen to them when they explain what they're calling for as Black Lives Matter co-founder Patrice Cullors did on this show last week. If anybody has um, time, they should look at their city budget. What we start to realize so much in our communities that are divested from, that have little access to healthcare, educational opportunities, access to jobs and healthy food, is that our city governments are using our tax dollars to primarily pay for an economy of punishment over an economy of care. And that's what so many Black Lives Matter organizers and organizers that are allies of Black Lives Matter are asking for is to uh, allow for reallocation of investment into some of the most marginalized and divested from communities. Yes, she's right. For one thing, if you've ever had the time to look up your city's budget, it's now. You're probably still in lockdown. What else are you gonna do? Watch The Sopranos in your sweatpants for the fourth time while you bake your eighth loaf of banana bread? Mm -hmm. It's still, still too dry. Second, an economy of punishment is the right way to think about it. For marginalized communities, and the black community in particular, we divest from the things that help create a healthy, safe, equitable society like housing and healthcare, and we put that money into surveillance and punishment instead. Just look at the warped priorities of New York City's budget. New York City spends more on policing than it does on the departments of health, homeless services, housing preservation, and development, and youth and community development combined. Instead of spending all that money on tanks and riot gear and pepper spray for police so they can steal people's bikes or arrest essential delivery workers or slash people's tires or violently break up barbecues, maybe we can shift that money to any number of other areas that actually help build safe, healthy, equitable communities like healthcare, housing, mental health services, or hell, just pay people to stand in Times Square and tell tourists where the M&M store is so the rest of us don't have to. You can't reform something while continuing to give it billions of dollars to enact violence on marginalized communities with impunity. Reforms are a good place to start, but our conception of what policing is for and how much policing we need is itself something we need to fundamentally rethink, which is why we're talking about defunding the police. That doesn't mean murder will suddenly become legal and everyone will have to take ninjutsu classes from Cobra hair dye over here. It just means taking money away from a fundamentally oppressive system, undoing the over-policing and over-surveilling of black communities, and reallocating many of the responsibilities we currently assign to police to other safer, more effective alternatives that don't involve someone showing up to your door with a badge and a gun. It's, it's actually about not having no police, right? But making sure again, that communities have the resources so that you can have less of a footprint of police, right? So I'll give you the example. Lots of people have been asking me for the last couple of days, hey, if we defund the police, what happens when you call 911? And what I say back is, well, if something's on fire, what number do you call? Well, you call 911. And who shows up? It's, it's the ambulance, right? I'm sorry, it's the fire truck. Um, and if somebody's having a heart attack, you call 911 and the EMT shows up. So we already have 911 giving lots of different emergency services. If the resources that folks needed so they didn't need to rely on law enforcement were there, right? If 911 had more options, communities would feel safer and you wouldn't be introducing a badge and a gun to situations that law enforcement could never be trained to manage in the first place and that they've been calling to get out of the business of for years. That's what the majority of protesters and activists I talk to say that they want. Exactly. Even a former police chief in New Orleans and Nashville said 90% of all the police department calls that I've looked at in my life have nothing to do with a major uniform crime. Let's spend the money we're lavishing on police departments on other nonviolent alternatives like mental health resources or substance abuse resources. Or if Tucker Carlson's the one calling, we can send the woke militia to force feed him, I don't know, vegan sausage. Maybe he'll like it. Maybe that'll be the end of it all. Look, maybe we can just listen to the activists and the organizers who are doing the work instead of spending time nitpicking their slogans. But if you're looking for synonyms, for defunding the police, President Thesaurus has like plenty of ideas. Defunding our police, dismantling our police, disbanding our police, ending our police force. This has been A Closer Look.
As New York struggles to reopen this week, remember that we're still a city in crisis and City Harvest has been stepping up to meet the increased need. If you're watching this online, you can hit the donate button. Stay safe. Wash your hands. We love you.